Okay, now Walt. This is Walt Willett. Okay, the response is this. Oh, there. <laughs> this is it, one of the immense pleasures of my life is meeting people like Walt. I first met you about 25 years ago and I couldn't believe the moustache because I thought <laughs> it was fabulous and it was bigger then. Uh, but then this man spoke with such gentle language and such fantastic evidence. This is Mr. Evidence. This is Mr. Complexity in the world I work in and food, public health. Um, so we actually, I said to him just now, why have I only got four minutes of listening to you? He said, I've got nothing to say. I'm no, he didn't say that. <laughs> I'm <laughs> on a diet. <laughs> He's on a diet. So, well, Walt is a, a, a big figure in this world. So those of you who don't know the food and public health, he, like some of the other speakers we've heard today, is guru. Okay, but that's because he listens to the evidence and generates evidence. Secondly, actually, I'm going to embarrass you. In, in the world that um, we operate in, academics were all judged by stupid indices, like sort of how tall you are, how big your moustache <laughs> is, whether you're wearing a tie. No, we're judged by things called like the H index. Anyone know H index? See, they don't know. So it means it's nothing to right. them. He's got the highest in the world. <laughs> that means he's the most cited, most, most everything-ish. Isn't that it? Something yeah, like that? People attacking what I publish. Yeah. Have I they moved the chairs yet? <laughs> yeah, they have. Okay. So Walt is going to talk for four minutes. And does it start now? Okay, great. Do you want me here or shall I go away? Yeah, I'll go away. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Uh, and uh, thank you, everyone, who brought us together. This is really an incredible and inspiring uh, event, along with hearing the great challenges we have before us. Uh, several years ago, I was wondering... Uh, whether our diets were actually improving in quality or not in the United States. Many of us, including a good number of people in this room, have been working very hard in various ways to try to improve diet quality, but we really, uh, what I realized was no one was tracking uh, the quality of diet in the United States on a regular basis. And that seemed pretty basic variable that we should be measuring to know whether we're actually achieving something or, or are going backwards. And I really, in fact, wasn't sure. We had gone through, we were going through the Great Recession. There was a lot of economic stress and there were reasons to think that diet quality could actually be uh, deteriorating. And p some anecdotal evidence that it might be. Uh, so I thought, well, let's, uh, let's actually look at this. Uh, and the first question, of course, is what are we going to use as a scoring system for diet quality? And fortunately, we had been working on that issue for over 15 years, uh, essentially creating what we called an alternative healthy eating index because we had already showed that the U.S. Department of Agriculture healthy eating index was totally useless. People who adhered better to that index or had a higher score had no better health outcomes than people who were very low on that score. So we... Uh, putting together evidence from our own studies and the world's literature, uh, identified 11 variables uh, in the diet that are strongly and robustly related to risk of coronary heart disease. And we showed that that index predicted heart disease and mortality and diabetes and many other health outcomes, not only in our own study, but others, uh, for instance, a study in the UK, the White House study, also showed that this healthy eating index uh, strongly predicted cardiovascular disease. So basically, we had a valid index uh, by which to assess dietary quality. Uh, so uh, then we took the National Health and Nutrition Survey data from the United States based on 24-hour recalls and applied our healthy eating index to this nationally representative data. Uh, that took a modest amount of effort, and uh, uh, one of our doctoral students, Daniel Wang, uh, really deserves credit for doing the, uh, the, the, the careful, detailed work on this. And what we showed was uh, that uh, diet quality had been steadily improving in the United States, starting, we began our uh, analysis at uh, 1999, and uh, we looked at it first up through, up through years 2009-2010. Uh, we showed a steady increase, and that was published uh, uh, last year. We've uh, just in the last couple of months received from the CDC the latest raw data from the NHANES survey and uh, applied that to our scoring system. And again, we uh, continue to show a steady improvement in diet quality. 
Perhaps what's more informative is to break this down into the 11 component variables that go into this. And as you can see, the uh, big driver of increased quality was trans fat. We've eliminated about 85% of trans fat in the U.S. diet. The next, I don't uh, I have a pointer here, but the pur dark purple line in the middle shows improvement in sugar-sweetened beverages, meaning that the, the score is going up, meaning the consumption is actually going down. And we can also see that whole grains, polyunsaturated fat, and fruit are creeping up in a, in a gentle way. Uh, so one thing this does is that say very clearly that change is possible. And we could discuss how, how these changes happened. But it uh, basically was mostly information and awareness plus regulation in the case of trans fat. So we do have, an, uh, we can document an improvement in diet quality. But if we break this down further by show, socioeconomic status, uh, this really paints a different picture than just looking at the mean value and shows that we have a huge, uh, huge challenge ahead of us because almost all the improvement was in the upper socioeconomic uh, status. People who have education and the resources to act upon it. The blue line at the bottom is the lower SES class and that's really not improved much at all during this period. And so the gap uh, approximately doubled by uh, socioeconomic status and obviously huge challenge in public health. So in this, my time is up, but uh, I basically I would like to uh, just use this to point out the fact that uh, we, we do have the means of measuring diet quality uh, in a fairly simple, straightforward way. It can tell us a lot about what's working and not working in our, in our efforts to improve diet quality. Uh, but I would also just uh, use this as an example that I think most countries probably should be tracking diet quality. This is such an important variable for health. Uh, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, countries do have available the national survey data to do this. If they don't, it's actually not very expensive or difficult to collect. And hopefully uh, in future years, we'll be able to look at other countries' trends and see how they're doing, hopefully uh, faster than we are in the United States. Thank you.